Good evening and welcome to Conway Planning Commission meeting. The meeting is now called to order. We will begin with the roll call. Uh, Rebecca Fincher. Present. Laura King. Present. Alexander Barney. Present. Adam Bell. Present. Letitia Sanders-Jones. Present. Ethan Reed. Present. Drew Spurgers. Present. Larry Webb. Um, and Greg West. Thank you. The minutes have been provided through email and regular mail to you and your packets. Are there any corrections? If none, we'll accept a motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Greg and a second by Laura. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The minutes are accepted for. Our first item is the subdivision review. Subdivision review items are included for consideration as administrative reviews to determine compliance with the Cumway Subdivision Ordinance, Zoning Code, and applicable plans. Such items are not conducted as public hearings. And we'll have our first presentation by Beth Skeeto. All right, good evening. Good evening. So uh, we're looking at the preliminary, preliminary plat approval of Bell Valley Subdivision. This represents phase four of the development. It, let's see. Uh, the applicant's requesting the preliminary plat approval of a 32 lot subdivision. Uh, it's located on the east side of South German Lane approximately 150 feet southeast of the intersection of Fawn Trail and South German Lane. The development, as I said, represents phase four of Bell Valley, and the proposed buildable lots range from 0.14 acres to 0.37 acres, all of which is consistent with the requirements for the R1 zoning district. The subdivision will propose access from South German Lane. Uh, two of the lots that are on the end by South German Lane uh, will front South German Lane, but we will not allow them to have access. They'll have access from the internal street. Um, the, uh, let's see. There will be a requirement for five foot sidewalks and six and a half foot of green space. And I've included in your packet uh, phase four as well as phase three, so you can understand the connection. This is just north of the previously approved preliminary plot for phase three. Do you have any questions? Does the applicant want to speak on this proposal? No, more than an hour. <laughs> you have 10 minutes, <laughs> Mr. Shaw. Yeah, no, Frank Shaw, 1350 Main Street. And um, this is phase three on the bottom of your page. Phase four ties in directly to the north of it. And then phase five will be to the north of phase four, which will be about another 60 lots. And that will develop that entire parcel out. If you look back on, the, I guess, your uh, aerial, um, back two pages back, you can see that the wooded area, it goes almost to the old, um, the old uh, sewer treatment pond. There's a corner in there. There's a notch out of it on the west side, and we're going to develop all that um, from phase three to phase four that's pictured all the way into phase five, and uh, we're going to do those as quickly as possible. Thank you. Any questions? I knew he'd have a question. First meeting question. This is what it's like. Okay, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I assume phase five is to the north here on this. Yes. It'll be a loop. It'll be a straight street, um, and we don't have access right there, which would tie into far. so we'll loop around that little out parcel um, that's a house that's already there. Okay. Any Thank other you. questions for the applicant? Okay, now we'll bring it back into committee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, commissioners, any questions? Discussion, maybe? Okay, no questions. We'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, so Ethan. 
Who second? I did. Adam. Who made the motion? <laughs> they, they went really fast. Yeah. You have to fast. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? The request is approved unanimously. Okay, our second request is for preliminary plat approval of Orchard Hill Subdivision Phase 3. And Ms. Skeeto mm -hmm. will present that. Sure. Uh, so this, uh, the applicant is requesting preliminary approval of a 31 lot subdivision located approximately 800 feet, feet south of MP Trail. It's immediately south of the previous phase, as you can see on page 10 of your report, um, Phase 2. Uh, received preliminary plat approval uh, in May of last year, and that fronts MP Trail, and this will be developed immediately south of that. The proposed buildable lots range from 0.68 acres to 1.82 acres, and this is consistent with the requirements for large lot subdivisions in the planning area boundary. So this property is 30, about 32 acres, and it is immediately adjacent to Phase 2, which is inside the city limits, but this property is actually outside city limits at this time, but it's still within our planning area boundary where the city regulates subdivision. Uh, the subdivision does propose access from MB Trail via the extension of two internal streets, Orchard Lane and Orchard Heights Drive, as well as two new additional internal streets. Sidewalk construction will not be required as the property meets the criteria for large lot rural subdivisions within the planning area boundary. However, in the event that uh, the property is annexed in the future, any construction that would commence after that time would be required to meet that sidewalk in lieu fee requirement. Any questions? No questions, we'll bring it back into commission. Any questions? Discussion needed? Mr. Shaw. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we used to, we approached the podium. Thank you. Frank Shaw, 1315 Main Street. This is um, directly behind um, phase two of Orchard Hills, and phase one was here on page seven, is back off to the right. There's a deep valley between phase one and phase two and three, and we will subsequently have phase four and five out there, and they will extend if you're looking on page seven with me. You can see um, how we dead end to the west. And um, if you went right down that property line and there's, you can notice down there, there's kind of a curly Q street. You can see it on your map up there. Um, we, we have this part of this parcel was acquired with that larger parcel. That is actually a concrete driveway going up the hill, making a big loop. It is really steep going up the hill. Uh, I charge James to drive down it when he comes up there because it's a thrill-seeking kind of trip down that hill. But we will extend that all the way down to Military Road at some point, and I'm going to discuss with your planning department whether to annex all of the remaining property I have up there, which is another 50 acres in that parcel, or to do it like we're doing it. But um, these lots are, um, I, I don't want to brag on them too much, but they're exceptional and they're very beautiful. And they hang off the side of the hill and they see for miles. In fact, you can see Chenal and Pinnacle and, and even Pettigene from different locations up there. It's not anything like you'll find in most of Conway, which we all know is you know kind of flat except for the ridge. This is a really um, pretty location. I'd encourage you to go look at it. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Shaw? We'll bring it back into commission. Can we go back yeah. to that plat just one second? Let me sure. be. Sh let me look at that. You can see that we have a street, and if I may, the dead ends to the west. We're going to put a turnaround there, and then um, James, I think we have. They, they thought this was happening. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They have we we flatted a street going due south between lots twenty. 7 and 28 that may not appear on the one on the screen, but we have um, put another stub out in there so that we can take that development back to the southwest. That would be back to my left and then due west. So I'm anticipating the street that goes to the west and the street going to the southwest either to be two cul-de-sacs or to make a big large loop up there. Just to explain it, I don't think it shows that on your plat. That's why I wanted to go back to it. 
I think it's in your packet, though. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions? Okay. We'll entertain a motion. And I should clarify, I apologize. I, I meant to indicate that staff does recommend approval with the completion of the amended punch list and, um, and with the conditions and everything and the corrections. My apologies. I didn't mean for oh, there to be any confusion. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion to approve. Seconded. That ends our subdivision review portion of our meeting. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so I'm to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the request passes unanimously. Was that Drew that made the motion and Adam that seconded? Alexander, thank you. And now we will begin the public hearing portion of our meeting. The Conway Planning Commission makes recommendations to the City Council on public hearing items. Items reviewed on this agenda will be considered by the City Council as early as January 25th, 2022. Items not approved by the Planning Commission may be appealed to the City Council within 30 days of the date of the Planning Commission denial, with exceptions of decisions made by the Planning Commission acting as Board of Zoning Adjustment. Following staff presentation, the applicant is granted up to 10 minutes for additional presentation with subsequent favorable public comments limited to three minutes per person. If opposed parties are present, the initial speaker is then granted 10 minutes with each subsequent public comment limited to three minutes per person. No person shall address the Planning Commission without first being recognized by the chair and stating his or her name, address, and address for public record. All questions and remarks shall be made from the podium and addressed to the chair to the commission as a whole. Any group with common interest shall select a speaker to address the commission on behalf of the group. Repetitive comments shall be limited. Okay, our first item. A requ request to modify Lot 7C of the North Market Plaza PUD to allow residential development. So this, this application is a little complicated, so if, if you have questions at any time, just give me a look or say, hey, okay, explain that a little bit better. Okay. So, so sometimes I've been known to, my logic jumps about two, three, two or three steps before I explain all of the, the points in between. I go from A to C very quickly. <laughs> so, okay. Um, th so this is a requested PUD modification, so a plan unit development modification. There are two types of modifications, minor modifications and major modifications. Major modifications require review by the Planning Commission, but they do not go forward to the, the City Council. So this is a major modification because it is changing the allowed land uses in, uh, in the development. Uh, the applicant is requesting to modify Lot 7 of the North Market PUD. Uh, it's probably one of the most complicated PUDs that I have I have re reviewed in terms of its its composition. So there's a lot of a lot of moving parts with it. But to boil it down, I think in a very sort of easy way is simply that they're modifying this to instead of it being uh, essentially mixed use development or a certain requirement that be devoted to mixed use development to allow it to be devoted uh, simply to apartment residential. So they're proposing uh, approximately 42 apartments on the site, um, one in a, a building with uh, 18 units and one in a, a building with 24 units. So the way it's currently laid out, it would require some level of, of commercial and that's, that's a, the effect of what this modification uh, ends up doing. Uh, the property uh, on the all north, south, and east sides, uh, north, west, and east sides, are all PUD and it is R1 to the south. Um, there is an existing uh, detention pond and, uh, and a separate retention pond on the west side of the west side of the property that you can see on the aerial. Um, we anticipate a traffic impact for the development um, to be approximately 400 vehicle trips per typical weekday, uh, and that's based on about 10 trips per um, per unit. Uh, 
and there'll be about 42 units. So that's that's what it's uh, likely around. Uh, currently on Meadow Lake Drive, which, which uh, trips would be diverted off of uh, Village Court, Ott Memorial, and Meadow Lake, but we only have traffic counts for Meadow Lake Drive is about 2,600 uh, average daily traffic, so it wouldn't have a very substantial traffic impact at all. It would be sort of moderate. None of the site is in, in the a FEMA designated floodplain. Uh, the comprehensive plan designates the area as mixed use, uh, so th this amendment will, that will allow um, mixed use, it just won't require mixed use. So that, that is the other component of this is that we still allow mixed use to occur, but the applicant's stated intent is to develop apartments. So in that sense, the amendment is still uh, consistent with the conference plan as its indication for mixed use in the site. Um, the site has set vac uh, vacant for numerous years. The original uh, developer of the PUD is no longer involved in the site. Uh, staff views that the, the PUD would allow reasonable use of the property in context of the previous development uh, of the remainder of the PUD. So it's it's largely been developed out as some limited office uh, with a lot of multifamily is, is essentially how it has developed out. Uh, staff views that it, the modification would not likely cause harm to adjacent properties. Uh, so on that basis, staff recommends approval of the PUD modification as it is consistent with the conference plan, would allow for appropriate use of the property in context with the surrounding area, and would not likely negative impact adjacent, negatively impact adjacent properties. Uh, we do not fully concur with the applicant's request, so uh, we've got sort of a more detailed staff recommendation that I'll go through the list of conditions of approval. Uh, one, the, the condition is, is kind of minor. Um, the lot 7 covers more than just this property, so this property is just Lot 7C. Uh, so this amendment would only apply, the condition is that this amendment would only apply to Lot 7C, and the conditions that exist for Lot 7 would remain in place. So this is not modifying all of Lot 7, but would modify Lot 7C only. Um, in addition, we, we rephrased some of the, the requests there. So if you look at Lot 7C, land use, um, the applicant's request uh, uh, related to some, some degree of amount of property used for certain square footages. We changed it to, to simply say Lot 7C would be developed allowing multifamily residential and all of the, the land uses that might be allowed there. Um, in addition, uh, we, did, we did note that there are areas that are devoted to retention, detention, and drainage uh, as of uh, January 12th, 2022. Uh, so those, uh, under this, those areas could not be reduced in size or volume and would be restricted for use as drainage and green space. The reasoning behind that is those areas are intended for the overall development. Um, so those areas are, are part of the detention and drainage for the overall development of the entire area. And so that, that, is, that is one of the reasons why. Uh, building setbacks, um, we just referenced the current plat of record for the property. Um, uh, in terms of that, it'd be generally consistent with the architectural site plan that's been submitted that you see in your packet in, a, in accordance with the building lines that are established on the plat. So there already are established building lines that are, that are on the plat. Those building lines are, are inconsistent with what, what was in the PUD, but the reasoning is that, um, well, the, the PUD, was, <laughs> as it was drafted, was not achievable. So it, it set out some requirements, but there's utilities in, in locations where you can't place a building on top of a utility line, and so that, that's one of the reasons for that. Uh, architectural standards, uh, the effect of this amendment would be to require the architectural standards of the development meet the re general requirements of the Conway Zoning Code rather than what exists for that development. Staff felt relatively comfortable with that, with that request. Uh, signage would remain the same. Landscaping, uh, this, uh, this is reflected that they would have to meet the landscaping requirements of the Conway Zoning Code. Uh, this was compatible or equal or, or slightly better than what, what the existing landscaping requirements were for the, for the development. Um, the other major change there um, that, that is, is indicated uh, would be vehicular connections. The development shall provide vehicular and pedestrian connections to the existing access easement directly east of the property known as Cha uh, Cambridge Village Drive. 
and then any other provisions not covered by the PUD, the rules of, of MF2 zoning would apply to the property. So the, the reasoning for that, uh, for a lot of these changes from what the, the applicant requested were largely just to clean up uh, things. So for instance, the existing landscaping regulations that had were for the PUD, they didn't seem all that different than what our, our landscaping regulations are in the code now. Uh, this, is a, this is an older PUD, and so that was one of the reasons we said, well, let's just apply the, the provisions of the code in this, this particular instance. So, any, any questions? You said the only easement is the one that's not vehicular. Uh, that, that vehicular easement, yes. That, that was the requirement for uh, uh, vehicle, vehicular and pedestrian connection to, to the east. Just one question that I don't, I'm just making sure I have a full understanding is, do we have somewhere the differentiation between 7 and 7C? I don't know that I can see where 7C specifically is. So if I don't you, know that it matters. I'm just curious. Yes. So if you look on the aerial, uh, that area that is basically highlighted, that's 7C. The remainder that goes back over to the east, uh, that includes lot 7. So it's been, it's been parceled into a lot 7A, 7B, and then this is, the remainder is lot 7C. So that Cambridge Village Drive that we're seeing there is part of Lot 7 as well? Yes. Okay, just making sure I understood. Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Rick Sowell, uh, Sowell Architects. We're at 1315 North Street downtown. We are here uh, representing the Castro family. A couple of the members of that family are with me this evening uh, in case we have any questions for them. We are here, as uh, James has already indicated, to request a modification to Lot 7C. And 7C is all we've requested. We uh, had not intended to uh, modify anything other than 7C uh, in this process uh, this evening. And also, like James said, we intend to develop uh, apartments only, uh, three-story uh, units, uh, a total of 42 in here, and we've provided adequate number of parking spaces for those. And so we feel like this will be a benefit uh, to the neighborhood. We feel like it fits in with uh, the original PUD. And by the way, uh, it wasn't us that complicated this PUD. Uh, <laughs> this, this was done many years ago, and uh, you're right, James, it is an unbelievably complicated PUD. We're actually trying to simplify it for you and make this as uh, residential only and, and not all of the other items that it could be and a, a mixture of what it could be. So we think this is a, a pretty simple approach. Uh, since we have um, understood that the cross access easement uh, going east out of the parking lot will be required, uh, we have uh, I've talked with uh, the applicant and they would like to, if you could go back to that site plan that we drew, that would be a lot easier for me to point this out to you. There in the lower left corner, our site plan, since we will have a connecting drive immediately to the east that goes into that parking lot uh, that's already there, uh, they would like to reduce some of this north-south paving that we've shown on there. We originally intended for that to be access into this apartment complex. And so speaking with the applicant just a few minutes ago, uh, they would like, if it's okay with you guys, to eliminate the one that goes south and connects to Middle Lake Road, since we're already going to have it. Yeah, uh, hopefully that'll be, yeah, that would simplify things. Yeah, the staff would definitely be amenable to that. Okay, all right, very good. And I think, let me, let me verify this, that they still want to keep the one that goes north and connects to Ock Memorial Boulevard. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Um, so we have the images up there. We have no problem with the conditions that the planning department has placed on any of this. Uh, we try to follow those um, development review requirements as closely as we possibly can and uh, agree with uh, the landscaping and the parking and everything else uh, that is being required for this project. I'll be happy to take any questions. Um, hopefully everything's acceptable to you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak in favor of this project? And this request? No, I think the Castro's are here to speak in favor of it, but they do not. Okay. Only if they want to. Okay. Is anyone here to speak in opposition of this request? Okay. 
There being none, we'll bring it into committee for discussion. Any thoughts, questions? I'm excited to see it developed. Yes. <laughs> I think it's a good spot for apartments. Okay. No questions? So at this time, we'll entertain a motion. I want to make a motion. I want to make sure that I, I wanted to ask James about um, the staff comments and conditions. So, um, want to make a, mo a motion for approval, and then I guess the, is that just one condition with the with the lot seven C? Um, I didn't want to read the whole thing, but with the comments that the staff has provided in our packet, without having to read the whole thing for yeah, us. essentially what mm -hmm. you can. You could probably make that motion as um, accept the modification request with with the staff's indicated changes and conditions. Okay. I'd like to ditto what James has recommended. You stick that in the form of a motion. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I would like to make a motion for approval, and then we'd like to make sure that the um, applicant is um, going to meet the conditions as stated, as the staff has recommended. And again, I haven't articulated that as James has, but if you guys are in agreement with how that has been formulated, then I'd like to make a motion for approval. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. This request passes unanimously. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Our next uh, public hearing item is a request to rezone 32.12 acres located immediately east of 4693 Dave Ward Drive from A1, which is agricultural, to MF2 multifamily and C3 commercial. Yeah, so this property um, is just west of of Walmart on the, the south side of Dave Ward. So if, if you know where Dave Ward Drive crosses Tucker Creek, uh, it's just on the, the west side of that property. Um, it's currently zoned A1 on the comprehensive plan. This is indicated for a transition zone. Um, and transition zone essentially uh, in the code has, has meant uh, to be intended for a variety of uses uh, based on the context of the area. Uh, originally, the way that when the, when the plan was adopted, uh, these transition areas were meant to go from sort of a, a residential context to a more office or higher intensity use context. Uh, on the plan, it, it indicated certain nodes for commercial development, which you'll, you'll notice at, at uh, for instance, uh, Dave Ward uh, and Hogan. Uh, there's a pretty large, substantially developed commercial node at that location. Additionally, if you go out to the west, uh, we're at Dave Ward at Artis. Uh, those areas are zoned commercial as well. Uh, and so that, that's a, that was sort of the original intent of the, the conference of plan was that over time, you would have those nodes develop first and then it would, it would transition. Uh, since that time, you have had some areas outside of those original nodes that have been zoned commercial. So based on that, that precedent that has been set, now staff in this, this particular area would view commercial as being an appropriate use, whereas if you went back 10, 15 years, uh, it, would, it would not have been an appropriate use, but given the change over time that, that has occurred, uh, staff does now view that as being consistent with the conference plan because it was a kind of a weird designation uh, to be indicated as, as transition. Um, this portion of of Dave Ward Drive has approximately 3,500 uh, aver average daily traffic, so it's a, it's a fairly low um, section, very fairly low uh, traffic section of, of Dave Ward Drive. There are significant portions of the site uh, that will be undevelopable uh, because they lie within a FEMA designated floodway. Uh, there's a distinction between floodway and floodplain. Floodway cannot you cannot put any sort of structure in. Flood plain can be modified. Uh, the property can be lifted out and can be developed. So a large portion of it is in, is in the flood way, uh, but there are portions that are in the floodplain that can be modified. So staff estimates that there's approximately about, about 10 acres of the site that could be, uh, could be developed 
Um, and so sort of our, our determinations are based on that. Um, when we look at traffic impact, um, with C3, likely the highest intensity type, to, type use that could go in a, a location of that type is, would be a fueling station. I don't believe that that's the intent of the, the applicant in this, in this case. However, that is uh, sort of a, one of the, the highest possibilities there. And then additionally, multifamily. Uh, so based on that, the, the potential traffic impact of the, the development would be moderate, uh, you know, uh, on a high end, uh, somewhere around 2,500 uh, vehicles per, per typical weekday. So, uh, and again, I always want to note to everybody that those could be a drastic overestimation. A lot of times when we look at potential traffic impact, what we are looking at is what is the worst case scenario of what might happen. Uh, and that, that's intended to be served sort of for a planning context. Um, beyond that, um, the, the zoning would allow the, the sort of the, the multifamily zoning, the MF2 zoning on the property would allow a maximum density of, of 18 units per acre. Uh, the maximum that, that could be yielded on the property based on, based on the known constraints would be about 71 units. Uh, the C3 uh, zoning would allow a variety of, of uses, including retail uses, with the highest likely intensity being uh, a fueling station. The applicant has not definitively or officially stated any definitive intended use for the, for the site, but we would anticipate that it would be office, retail, and multifamily development uh, being uh, occurring there. Um, Staff does not see that the rezoning, rezoning would likely cause harm to adjacent properties. Again, viewing this as sort of the natural evolution of this, this corridor over time. Uh, and development of the site would be subject to the subdivision regulations as well as development review and the, the Dave Ward uh, Drive access management plan. So based on those uh, factors, um, staff recommends approval of the rezoning request as the consistent with the established zoning precedent uh, for the portion of Dave Ward Drive would allow appropriate use of the property in context of the surrounding area and would not likely uh, negatively impact adjacent properties. So, any questions? I had a question. We're asking for 11.31 acres to be C3 and then the remaining to be MF2. Which acreage is which? So the, the northern frontage um, along Dave Ward, that would be the portion that would be C3. And then the, the remainder that's uh, to the south, that is what would be MF2. That's what we're seeing on page 20 of our packet, correct? C3 correct. is the blue, okay. James, this, this out there is awful low. I know they did a build up to try to get back there in the back to, uh, you know, to, to, to work, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there any, I mean, there, it seems like they'd have to put a lot of dirt work in this. I mean, a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, you can pretty much, well, as I said, you can essentially ride off two-thirds of the property as, as right. being undevelopable. So, so you're talking about just the 10 acres up front? It's that, it wouldn't be zoning that. It would be zoning the, the entirety of it, uh, but it but would be. But you said 20, 20, 20 plus acres is in the floodway. Correct. So if you if you if you look on that that aerial up there on the on the screen, uh, the floodway extends essentially to the west, and so it's it's kind of like a line parallel to, to Tucker Creek, right. and so it's the it's the very western portions of the property that that are uh, developable. Okay. So th there's and a there's a portion of it that's sort of on that that northern uh, portion that they intend for C three that's developable, and then a portion of it. Uh, to the south of that, that would be developable for MF2. And that's pretty much right behind that go-kart place or whatever it was, straight across from the bouncy yep. house by Walmart, correct? Uh, no, this is this is further west. So if you look on that aerial, uh, Walmart Walmart is to the east, so this is probably uh, about a, a quarter mile to the west. Okay. To, to follow so it's up. a little bit past that go that uh, yeah. go-kart place it is. was. I did want to follow up on Thank you. Um, Mr. West's question, though. It's, this is kind of that area where there's yeah. been dumping allowed of, of, of uh, soil and gravel to build it up. It kind of looks like an island that's been kind of made to build it up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, <clears throat> property owners can modify it 
Understood. So oftentimes within the floodplain, if you get a, if you get a floodplain <laughs> development permit or, or a permit to modify the floodplain, correct. Yeah. Right, and so they're not asking for any of the floodway to be, so we're, we're still going to allow it to be rezoned even though we know that it's in a flood way. Is that what we're the, the, the reason being do? is that the request is made for the entirety of the property. When something's in the in the floodway, uh, there's there are federal restrictions. So we're we're a part of the National Flood Insurance Program. So uh, us being a participating member in that, regardless of what it's zoned, uh, there's there was no development that would be allowed in the in the floodway because of our participation in that, and we have to adopt certain regulations that that prohibit that. So that you might have it zoned, but that does not mean that it necessarily can be developed. So no matter how much it's built up, and I understand that the owners can do whatever they want to do with it. It, it, the floodway can never be transitioned to a floodplain because it cannot be modified. It's what you explain. Un unless FEMA, unless it's designated that way by FEMA. Okay. So that that would be a reason why you might you might designate the entirety of the property is because where the floodway is today may not be where the floodway is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be, you know, the science on that could, could change. They could do different hydraulic modeling. You know, it, we, there might be other types of interventions that, that come up in the, in the future. Uh, but the, the point of, of bringing that to y'all's attention was, was primarily to let you know that even though this property is, sits at about 30 acres that's, that's being rezoned, the, the, there are limitations that exist on the property that would limit the amount of actual development that could occur. Okay. Any just other one, questions? Yeah, just one. So whenever they decide what they want to build, that's going to come back through the planning department, right? No. So um, the process, so that you all hear the, hear the rezoning, uh, you vote it up or vote it down. Uh, it goes on to city council. So if you if you vote it up, then it goes on to city council. City council city council will review it. At that point, the property owner it's probably not the best terminology to use, but basically they they in essence have vested land use rights that basically say that the law says that I can develop it because I'm allowed this land use. At that point, they coordinate with staff on developing a, a site plan for the site that meets all of the requirements of our development review standards. And so once they have met all of those requirements, then they are allowed to develop it. So it does not come back before you all because, yes, yeah. Additionally, the property, the property would need to be platted, which is something that, that staff reviews as well. And then the access to the site would be reviewed by RDOT, uh, Metroplan, and the city as well because of the day board access management plan. So so technically they couldn't say what they want to put on it or improve what improvements are to be made because it whatever they may want to do may not be it may not be properly zoned for that right now. Like if they wanted to put a future fueling station or something you, like that. Yeah, I mean you might want to ask the, the the applicant the discussions that we have had, you know, the, the reason the reason that we say that it's it hasn't been definitively stated is because that, that's not something that, that we require. Okay. Oftentimes when we, when we speak with an applicant, we'll talk about potential uses for the site, okay. and they say, yeah, we think we might, we might end up doing that. But okay. you know, as, as I've noted in, in training, when you, and the reason I point out the highest potential intensity uses is not to say that that's immediately what's going to come. Mm -hmm. That's part of the sort of the review criteria that you all consider when you mm -hmm. think about zoning is, it could be everything from a daycare to, you know, a fueling station. Because you've got you've got to understand what what does C three mean, what does C three allow, okay. and that that's the, really the reason for it. Okay. Understanding that, oftentimes that may not be what's developed. This would probably not be a great site for a fueling station, okay. um, but it likely would be good for some type of office. Okay. So that would have to fall into the C three category, whatever okay. they put there. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, James. Okay. Anyone here to speak on behalf of this request? Hello, Hello. Bobby French, uh, 
I'm representing the applicant. Uh, my address is 1021 Front Street. Uh, basically, we I went and spoke with James on this, I don't know, about a month ago, and we were looking at PUD originally. And uh, after talking with staff, they were like, you know, we're wanting to do commercial up front and then either some duplexes or apartments or something in the backside. And they were like, why don't, you, you know, why don't you just do that, you know, instead of the PUD and kind of the way it worked out. So that's that's why we're here, you know, and uh, so basically what they want to do, like I said, just some commercial up front, no gas station or anything like that. But I think the main thing they're wanting to do is maybe some multifamily duplex kind of townhouse stuff in the backside currently and then hopefully, you know, some commercial office stuff in the front. Is, that's their plan. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Is that answered? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Is anyone here to speak in opposition of the request? Okay, there being none, we'll bring it into commission. Okay, commissioners, let's see you. Any questions? Any? Whenever, okay. So, uh, if no questions then, or further discussion, we'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 In opposition? Or abstention? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. So that concludes our items for the public hearing. James, do you have any announcements for us? I do not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll take a motion to adjourn. Make a motion that we adjourn. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>